Hey, Sharon. Good morning. It's your ex-sister-in-law, Melissa. How's it going? Just a friendly reminder that I'll be counting on you to join us at the Mother's Club luncheon today. Hey, Melissa. Good morning. Great to hear from you. How are things going with you? Yes, yes, enough with the pleasantries. Just hurry up and make your way over to my house. As the esteemed wife of a highly influential businessman and the illustrious leader of the Mother's Club, I'll graciously enlighten you about the vast disparity between our social statuses. You do remember where my house is, don't you? It's that grand mansion perched atop the hill, visible to anyone with functioning eyes in this town. I can only fathom how challenging it must be for you, a wife who's forced to toil away every day instead of truly living her life. I thought it would be a magnanimous gesture to offer someone as destitute as you a fleeting glimpse into the opulent, high-class lifestyle akin to that of a celebrity. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I can't make it. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this before, but I have work on weekdays. And it would cause problems if I just didn't show up today. Work is work, you know. You may not have considered this, but declining an invitation from me, the esteemed leader of the Mother's Club, will undoubtedly stir up trouble. I demand that you come over immediately. Do you think it'll go well for you if you just defy my order like that? Sorry, but I'm actually going to New York City on a business trip today. There's nothing I can do about it, you know? What? You're going to New York City? Yes. Thanks to the business trip, I won't be returning until the day after tomorrow. Oh, what's this? Another one of your feeble attempts to deceive me into letting things slide while you enjoy your little pleasure trip, huh? Nice try. I can't believe that you could come up with such an absurd reason. I'm sorry, what? I told you already. This is a business trip. Oh, sure, you can say that. But let's not forget that New York City is also a fantastic place for sightseeing, as I'm sure you're well aware. It's amusing how you'd stoop so low as to use a flimsy business trip excuse just to indulge in a sightseeing tour and attempt to establish your supposed superiority. Pathetic, really. Claim superiority? What are you talking about? You've completely lost me. Naturally, someone as destitute as you would have the audacity to behave so impudently. It's crystal clear that you're desperately searching for anything to assert your superiority, because you know deep down that you can't measure up. Okay, look. You do understand the difference between a business trip and going traveling for fun, don't you? There is no way I would be willing to just travel to New York City for sightseeing when I am busy with work. And why do you keep saying that I'm poor? What evidence or basis do you have for making such statements? I couldn't care less about your excuses. It's not up to you to disobey my orders. As the illustrious leader of the Mother's Club, you better damn well listen to what I say. Cancel that insignificant little trip of yours right this instant and make your way to the Mother's Club luncheon. I'm sorry. But there are some serious business negotiations I have to be a part of shortly. So I must be going. What? Don't lie to me. You're nothing but a pathetic loser. And if you do manage to find some work, I bet it's some sketchy gig that barely brings in any decent income. I'm not lying. And you're just wasting my time. If you'll excuse me, I really must be heading off now. Hold it right there, Sharon. Don't you dare walk away from me. We're not done talking yet. This is absolutely outrageous. I don't care about whatever work you have. This luncheon should be the top priority in your life. I can't believe the level of insolence you're displaying. Hello, Sharon. I'm contacting you about the regular Mother's Club luncheons. You told me that weekdays were no good, correct? Well then, how does next Saturday sound? The weekend should prove to be no problem for you, I imagine. Saturday? Well, I'm busy with work in the morning, but the afternoon should be fine. I think I can put that in my schedule. Thank you for adjusting your plans. Oh my. It's rare to hear you being so polite. If only you could be this docile all the time. I mean, it's not like I miss going to every single one. And I'm sorry if that impression ever came across. Also, docile? Anyway, it sounds like my schedule will allow me to go this time. 
but unfortunately I can't guarantee that I'll be there every time in the future. So let me get this straight. In a world where a two-day weekend is the norm, you're actually working on a Saturday morning? Is that what you're telling me? It's pretty clear that you're so poor that you'll do anything to scrape together some extra cash, huh? No. My company is just currently doing business with a company that is off on Sundays and Mondays rather than the traditional weekend. So anyone who is taking part in the meetings needs to go to work on the weekends. I am one of those people. So I have to work on Saturday mornings. Well, I'm a stay-at-home housewife, so I can't say I really understand any of that. It sounds too complicated and frankly unimportant to someone like me who has such a prestigious businessman for a husband. Speaking of him, your new husband is the head of sales department at that company, Synergy Innovations, right? Oh, so you were aware of that then. You're not that clueless after all, huh? Yes. Some time ago, my company was doing some business with Synergy Innovations, and I met him during one of our meetings. Oh, is that so? Oh! Oh. Right. Yes. I heard something about that recently. I think he mentioned seeing someone whose name matched one of the mother's club list. Well, if that's the case, then we can have a great talk about it at the next luncheon. Won't that just be fantastic? Yes, sure. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. Hey, Sharon, are you finally there or what? I bet you're already on your way trying to make up for being fashionably late as usual. Don't keep everyone waiting though. I'm sure they're used to your tardiness by now. Hurry up. Oh, good afternoon, Melissa. I just finished up with my work for the day. So I should be able to make it there by noon as promised. I've been preparing some of the best refreshments you've ever tasted. So I eagerly look forward to your arrival. Oh, Sharon, let's talk about today, shall we? You stormed off in a huff just because a little tea got spilled on you? Seriously, why are you so touchy? It's not like the tea was scalding hot and would have actually burned you or anything. Jeez, lighten up, drama queen. It doesn't matter if it was hot or cold. Throwing a drink in someone's face is wrong no matter how you look at it. Don't you realize that? Oh my my. Look who's got a little temper tantrum going on. Seems like you've got a real short fuse, huh? Just so you know, all that stress isn't doing any favors for your health or your complexion. Maybe you should try exercising some self-control and not let your emotions run wild. It wouldn't hurt for you to be more reasonable, you know? The woman who splashed tea in my face at a public gathering is telling me to be reasonable? That's a laugh. Oh, look at you playing the victim card. It's no surprise that your snide and condescending attitude rubs everyone the wrong way. But hey, I guess you're just used to being disliked, aren't you? It's not exactly a mystery why people can't stand you. When did anyone ever mention something like that? Well, if you bothered to show up at the luncheons more often, maybe you'd have a clue. But I understand you're too busy being poor and having no real opportunities in life. Trust me, I totally get it. However, that still doesn't excuse your pathetic behavior earlier. I can see why you're so angry though. Clearly, you're just seething with jealousy over how successful my husband is. I mean, yeah, he's absolutely outstanding. It must eat you up inside. Yeah, he probably is. But when he mentioned how he just recently managed to close some business with another big company, you just had the scariest look on your face. You're lucky I was the one looking at you at the time because anyone else would have caused a scene. I thought that since you were someone who seemed to have to go out on lots of business trips... I thought you would be well aware of all the work that my husband's business would involve, as you have to deal with it so often. And yet, after hearing about how successful he was, your expression was completely giving away how frustrated you were. I hope you know. It's not good for you to be so jealous of my husband. He's just a truly spectacular businessman with some strong business connections. That's all. Oh, is that so? That's the impression you got? So you're saying I looked jealous? Oh, absolutely. It's crystal clear that you're the type of person who wears her emotions on her sleeve. Your thoughts were written all over your face. So obvious. I purposely splashed that tea on you to try to cool you down because you were getting so heated. What with that jealous expression and your clenched fists? People like you just drive me up the wall. 
don't blame me. Anyone in my position would have felt compelled to do the same thing. It's only natural. Ignoring your attempts to justify the unjustifiable, I just want to confirm something with you here. Your husband was saying that he was the one who closed that deal, right? Yes. Yes, he was. He closed the deal with one of the biggest companies in the industry, Celestia Corp. Hmm. That sounds strange to me. When I think about the days when Synergy Innovations representatives came to our company for negotiations, the only people who came were young women. Huh? Your company? Sharon, are you saying that you're an employee of Celestia Corp? Yes, actually. Anyway, I heard something at the luncheon that didn't sit right with me. So I'm planning to talk to some of our staff at the start of next week. Huh? What's this all of a sudden? Are you going to be trying to look into my husband's business or something? Well, depending on how things pan out with the investigation, the business contracts between Synergy Innovations and Celestia Corp might end up having to be terminated. What? Well, it may come to pass that we'll have to speak directly to your husband, or at least to some other Synergy Innovation staff. I can't say one way or the other what the conclusion could end up being though. It could be fine but it could also become quite a problem. Hold on, Sharon. What are you talking about? Explain everything to me. I'm sorry, but you'll have to excuse me as I must be going. Sharon, you need to do something about this now. All this is your fault. Hurry up and do something. What is it? Sorry, but I'm in the middle of eating dinner. Can this wait? At this rate, I'm going to end up getting divorced. My husband told me that because I invited you to the Mother's Club luncheon, his taking credit for the Synergy Innovation contract got exposed. Oh, is that so? And yet, there you were being angry at me over just having tea splashed on you. Are you even human anymore? Don't you have any sympathy for me, any at all? Okay, and? What do you mean, and? This sounds like a marital problem to me. It's not exactly my place as an unrelated person to speak up in an argument between a married couple, is it? Can't you just say something to him to get him to calm down? Something about how the contract will be fine or something. Look, this is the most important thing to me, so just do something. I'm telling you, your marital troubles have nothing to do with me. No, you're wrong. You have everything to do with this. I had no idea your husband was the president of Celestia Corp. How was I supposed to know that you were related to someone so important there? And on top of that, it turns out that it was actually one of my husband's subordinates who had managed to close the contract. He had just wanted the credit and tried to act like he was the one who did the work involved. There's no way I would have known about any of that. How could I possibly know what was going on? I'm totally innocent. Well... Regardless of whether or not you knew about it, the fact of the matter is that your husband tried to steal the credit for someone else's work. That's why he has to take responsibility for his wrongdoing. That's why I'm asking for your help. You're connected to the top of Celestia Corp. Put in a good word or something. Make it so that the contract doesn't get canceled. Just do something. You're also at fault, remember? Oh, the contract? That's not getting canceled. Things will proceed normally. Really? That's a relief. Yes, with conditions attached, of course. Conditions? Well, if everything had gone as your husband had wanted, after the contract was finalized, he would have tried to make sure he was the one in charge of it. Of course, that will be completely unacceptable. That doesn't sound good. My husband will be so angry. I can imagine he will. But that's not my problem. Anyway, if the woman I mentioned earlier who actually closed the deal becomes the one in charge of it, the contracts can remain and business can continue. Of course, we have already informed the Synergy Innovations executives of these conditions. If that happens, then my husband will be removed from the project entirely. He might even end up getting fired. Please, it won't be any good if he gets kicked off. You need to do whatever you can to let him be in charge of the contract. If he's in charge, then everything will be all right. Look, 
I have told you already, haven't I? The executive staff of Synergy Innovations has already been notified. There's nothing else I can do at this point. They already know everything. Yes, this has become a problem between two companies. The scale of the issue has far surpassed that of one couple's marital dispute. All I did was splash some tea on you, and now you're acting like I committed some unforgivable crime. What on earth possessed you to go to such extreme lengths just to get back at me? Talk about an overreaction. Get a grip, will you? Melissa, I think you're misunderstanding things here. You splashing tea on my face had absolutely nothing to do with the precarious situation that has developed between Synergy Innovations and Celestia Corp. It didn't? Oh, thank God. Yes. The two events, while happening at similar times, were completely unrelated. The contract issue resulted solely from your husband trying to steal credit for closing the deal. Thanks to that, it became a company-spanning issue. As for you splashing tea on me, that was solely a private issue between you and me. I'll say it again. Those two events had nothing to do with each other. You splashing tea on me wasn't what caused the marital problems you are having now. I had no intention of trying to connect those two events together, nor do I now. Please keep that in mind and don't get it mixed up anymore, okay? Sharon, what's going on? What did I just receive at my door? A man is telling me I've been served, and it says you're suing me for assault? You're trying to get damages? Why are you doing this to me? Good evening, Melissa. As poorly timed as ever, I see. I think it should be obvious what is happening, as you just described it to me yourself. Do you think splashing tea in my face wouldn't fall under the definition of assault? It could have been hot. I could have been horribly burned. What are you blabbering about? You claimed that you wouldn't seek revenge on me for accidentally splashing tea on you. And now you have the nerve to backtrack on your own words? How dare you? Well, that's not all either. I'm also suing you for defamation. Thanks to all the slanderous lies you've been spreading about me within the Mother's Club. Things like how my household is so poor that we can only afford to eat expired and moldy food, or that I need to work shady jobs in order to pay off the extreme debt my family is saddled with, or that my frequent business trips are actually trips to see a man I've been having an affair with. Do you deny having spread these rumors around not only the Mother's Club, but much of our neighborhood? There may be people who actually believe those lies, and those lies have harmed my reputation within the community. That's why I'm suing you on both accounts. Don't you think you're taking things too far? A lawsuit is just going over the top. Look, I ended up getting divorced from my husband already. Isn't that enough for you? Why do you still have to hound me like this? You're such a terrible person, Sharon. And here I thought you were the best ex-sister-in-law I've ever had. Didn't I tell you? The two cases were completely unrelated. Thus, they would be dealt with separately. Of course, I would be happy to settle the case out of court if you would just pay me compensation for all of the distress you've caused me. What is going on? For you to be living in such a shabby apartment with only one bedroom, yet actually be married to a company president? You're practically a celebrity. It's completely unfair. I'm sorry, what? If I had known about that, I wouldn't have made such a stupid mistake. Okay. Putting aside how you sound like you think it would have been fine for you to treat me poorly if I actually were poor, that apartment you're talking about is just a place I'm renting to do remote work. Do you realize that? That is just some place you do remote work at? That's impossible. Well, our company started allowing employees to primarily work remotely around two years ago, but I'm not really the kind of person who can get work done at home. So I rented out a different place so I could focus properly. It's also close to my son's elementary school. So it's pretty convenient for taking him to and from school too. Our actual house is in a gated community a bit further out of town, in a more affluent area. Wait, a gated community? There's only one of those near here. 
And that's the richest area in the city. Don't tell me. You're actually living there. Look, there's nothing else relevant you want to ask, right? Hold up, are you serious? Nothing else relevant? I've got a ton of questions left, and you better be the one to answer them all. After all, you're the mastermind behind this chaotic disaster. You practically flipped my whole life around, and now you're acting like it's no big deal? Well, I can't say I really want to talk to you any longer. So your questions can instead go through my lawyer. She'll be in touch with you soon. As for me, I'll be going now. Goodbye. No, wait, don't go yet. Look, my husband is also trying to bring money out of me. I'm begging you. Please don't push forward with this. I've suffered enough. Please just let it go. Please talk to me, Sharon. After our last conversation, things took a turn. Melissa ended up settling the case by sending me the money I had requested. As for the money her now ex-husband was after, it seems like he was seeking some sort of retribution for her infidelity. Turns out she had been having an affair with another man, who was already a father himself. Her ex-husband was already in a tough spot having been demoted and facing a significant pay cut as a consequence of his actions. But let me make it clear, the affair and his demotion were completely unrelated. He did everything in his power to make Melissa pay for her actions. It seems he even gains custody of their daughter, which means Melissa now has to provide child support for a child she no longer gets to see. So now, Melissa finds herself working tirelessly day and night to fulfill her financial obligations. Quite a departure from her previous life as a privileged housewife. Perhaps she'll learn a thing or two from this experience. However, since she's never worked a day in her life, she's struggling quite a bit. One day, she sent a text to everyone in the Mother's Club, complaining about how tough work was for her. Well. It seems everyone has had enough of her constant whining. So they simply blocked her to avoid dealing with it anymore. 